so thank you naji for speaking to arabian reseller uh, naji uh, is the regional head at koda kalaris and we'll be talk- talking about the document management system you know the market and uh, their scanners the new scanners that they've launched on the market so th- uh, thank you naji once again for speaking to arabian reseller most welcome and i'm happy to be with you and have this uh, conversation okay uh, can you tell us about the growth of the document imaging market in the region sure so um if if i want to first of all uh, give you an overview besides give you some references and how um uh, d- uh, different <coughs> articles are looking at this so from, and also from our view so definitely uh, the document imaging market is growing that we can see but again um uh, uh, some studies for example from idc which started or were around uh, the beginning of the pandemic did indicate a decrease in the shipments of scanners but and, and this is the main difference is that uh, yes there has been an, a, a big impact on the scanners shipments and deliveries uh, but the the document imaging market did grow and is still growing and according to studies for example from data bridge market research um uh, what they indicate is that uh, 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 the growth rate is at almost 14% year on year from 2020 until 2027 and this is something we can we can see also from our side so uh, th- this market uh, uh, this market of uh, document imaging is expected to reach 144 billion dollar in 2027 Uh, and there are a lot of factors that play if if you like me also to talk a little bit about it to give you a better view now if i would start and go back a little bit on what has been affected and i think this is this is for everyone to see you know shipments have been d- delayed uh, uh, prioritization on on the shipments also have changed as you know between food and medicine uh, that took priority everywhere in the world and not scanners or in specific it Uh, uh, tools that have been shipped physically at the same time the focus of the governments uh, the focus of the it uh, spending uh, all has shifted in in uh, last year and that is something we definitely understand and we support and we also take measures to help such organizations in their priorities but with, with all of that uh, you can see that the utilization of the software and the document imaging in these organizations have increased so uh, uh, at the end of the day it's about the data and how they are viewing the data and what's the source of the data and probably in this interview we're going to talk a little bit more about the impact and where the data is coming from and 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 it's not about just the 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 uh, scanner itself it's about uh, the data that is coming behind uh, the documents and and where it's coming and how it's being treated okay okay So, what is driving the uptake of document imaging solutions in the region? Uh, when you look at, uh, you know, the the reasons for companies going for such solutions. Yeah. So, uh, uh, a, a lot of factors. So, uh, first of all, uh, as you know, in the previous days, in the I don't want to call it the good old days, but before the pandemic, uh, people used to go around with a paper, right? You know, they need a signature. The paper is there. they write down they fill it up if they need to add another paper it goes into a file and they store it but now people are, there is a restrictions on 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 access everywhere employees are not going so far as they used to uh, there has been, there has been shifts on on who's attending offices and who's not and who who still has a, an access so between the remote access to data and to documents did increase this so organizations realize that they have to access this data regardless where it is and even if it's in uh, uh, on a document store somewhere or it's on a server or it's on their emails there has been the, the, there is a lot of measures that has been taken which increase the utilization of the software uh, uh, for document imaging we call it document imaging but it's more of a data that that is being extracted there has been uh, a lot of uh, higher security measures uh, 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 put by these organizations and by these uh, agencies because again the remote access especially you know over 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 the internet and and, and over special access uh, uh, has been breached sometimes has been uh, need to be enhanced 
So the data moving from these organizations back to the to the to the to the remote users uh, did require uh, uh, extra measures. Uh, also, and and this is something not to hide, uh, the, the pandemic did uh, uh, impact the, the return on investment of these organizations. So now everyone is looking for different ways to better utilize their spending and their budgets. So even our partners and customers, and this is a daily conversation that we have with them, is that how can we how can we have a better return on investment from actually any step that they are taking? And it's not about just a scanner or it's about a process. Besides, uh, as you see, the world is moving fast now. Uh, it has been uh, in a lockdown, things were stable, but the world has to catch up. So there are uh, faster processes that 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 require different kind of access, different uh, uh, kind of treatment to the to the uh, to the data, and definitely the workflow. Let me go back saying that you know you needed an approval. You take a paper. You run from uh, you know one person to the other. You know where to go. You go to their offices and and you get it signed. But now, uh, even if there were workflows people will still reliant on the manual uh, workflow but now they can't meet they cannot move a paper so there has been a lot of uh, uh, workflows put in place to, to 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 give them a better access and and to to make things move okay so so uh, you you mentioned about the pandemic and how you know people are adjusting to that uh, uh, what kind of challenges have you encountered during the pandemic i mean as a company and how have you uh, managed to overcome those challenges well definitely there has been a lot of challenges you know on a on a on a, on a business side on a personal side so uh, uh, first and and uh, foremost is that um, uh, uh, the well-being of our employees and our partners and our customers came in the first place because as you know uh, even if we wanted to move we didn't want to 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 put any risk on our employees and on our partners and customers so definitely one of the main challenges was the remote support and delivery. So uh, this this has changed the way that we that we look at things. Now again, we do uh, uh, manage from here in Dubai. We do manage uh, uh, different uh, uh, countries and different regions where in the past we were able to go and visit them when there is a bigger challenge. But now we knew that that is not possible. So we have took a lot of measures to, to keep that support because at the end of the day, the customer need the support and they require it. So, so one of the major challenges was the remote support and delivery. So we, we took a lot of measures uh, 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 between, you know, uh, different tools to our professional services team, uh, 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 a lot of knowledge, uh, more knowledge on how to manage this remote support uh, uh, the, the access that they need remotely. Now, and, and this is one one part. And again, another part which I've mentioned earlier is the financial challenges, because this is impacting everybody, right? So we had to take a lot of measures when it comes to supporting our partners and customers. I'm not going to say financially, but at the same time to ensure that this is not really hurting their budgets and they are still able to operate and they are still able to run their environment as they used to or as, as as good as it can be so you know we looked at the opex uh, 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 versus the capex model we ran a lot of subscription models to help our partners so they don't they don't have an immediate impact uh, uh, this is this is this was a, a, a game changer for us and finally um, a lot of as i said a lot of uh, changes came to the environment of our partners and customers so they require different solutions that they need to uh, uh, implement. But as you know, even with the remote uh, access, they still require a proof of concept. They require a demo. So we did set up here in our office a full virtual demo center. Uh, so we were able to uh, uh, um, have the same environment of our customer. Our team comes here and, and again, of course, we keep the social distance. We keep the team away from each other, but they're able to film and to show our customers how these demos can run, how we can, uh, how the uh, how the proof of concept is successful once uh, they have it on their premises. 
Okay, uh, you mentioned about remote access um, uh, because of the pandemic. That is, uh, has that increased a lot? And uh, second question would be about the same thing. Uh, uh, you're offering uh, remote service offerings as well um, uh, globally. So is that are that available here? And what do these offerings uh, include? Uh, first question you said um, um, the, the impact of the demo, yeah. right? This is now nowadays. If I want to say it, 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 it went up from. 30% of our normal to almost 90% of our normal. So most of our, of our access is remotely. And uh, what helped us here, and this is a, a main factor, is that the customers do, re do require this. So before the pandemic, the customers, if you would propose the idea or the concept of remote, the question is, why don't you come here and show me how you're doing it? Why don't you come to my premises and, and implement it? And, and, and therefore, we were all over the place. The team were, you know, going from one customer to the other, uh, traveling to meet the customer requirements. But now that, of course, has changed. And to be fair, the customers helped us in that. So they even have different measures that they put in place for the remote access. Uh, there are a lot of uh, vendors that are providing these uh, secure for the remote access, which we are benefiting from and helping us to, to, to access their environment. So your second question was around... Um, uh, the remote service offerings. Um, what, what kind of services does it, does it uh, include? It, okay, so it includes, it starts from, from uh, uh, the demos. I mean, I'm talking about pre-sale to after sale. So it starts from the, from the demo, showing the customers, uh, uh, imitating their environment, showing the proof of concept to uh, delivering and implementing the project remotely, uh, even to the after sale support, whatever they need, we are able to <clears throat> remotely uh, help them and ensure that they are not affected by us not being there uh, physically. So the whole cycle moved from the face to face to remotely without any exception. Even the discussions, as you know, we're having it right now, rather than face-to-face, -face, has been affected. So even the discussion with the clients or with our customers or even our partners is mostly uh, uh, virtually. Okay. Um, uh, you mentioned uh, briefly, like uh, one of the questions was about the pandemic and the challenges. Uh, you mentioned uh, you looked at the well-being of your partners as well as as, as one of the, uh, you know, uh, key, uh, you know, initiatives as well. Uh, how have you ensured business continuity for them? Have you uh, introduced new programs? Have you introduced new lead generation campaigns? How, how, how have you helped them? Yeah, so uh, I've mentioned briefly and, and I pray, probably I'll expand a little bit more. So the support is, is not only for our partners. So even for our customers, we've been uh, holding um, virtual trainings for our partners. We're enabling, uh, enabling them with the tools that we have so uh, again, uh, earlier on is that we support our partners, uh, the partners support our customers, or we support our customers and the partners are there too. But right now, uh, there is, there, there, we are all in the same bucket. So we and our partners are together. So our partners are fully enabled to do this remote uh, access, the remote support, uh, the tools that we had are fully shared with our partners to ensure the successful deliveries. Again, you remember the pandemic came, you know, it, it, it was one day, you know, you, you sleep, everything is fine. And the second day, God, what's happening? And and there were projects that were running. There were uh, uh, several rollouts that needed to continue, even if they have been uh, uh, affected. So we ensured that all of these projects with our partners are, 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 are on the right track. Now, the document imaging is also expanding into several areas uh, 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 with, with, with the customers. What I want to say here is that we are also trying to help our partners, educating them uh, with our knowledge. I, I mean, this is our core, right? Document imaging. So what we're also trying to help to ensure the business continues for our partners, that a single customer is uh, uh, previously only talking about, for example, scanners or about a, a, a workflow. Uh, nowadays, there are other areas where the partner can expand his offerings. And it's not about just the, 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 the scanner itself, but it's about uh, approaching these customers with different offerings 
when it comes to, you know, to the workflows, when it comes to capturing data from different environments. Besides the new, uh, the new uh, uh, launching that we did on the Infuse, if I want to spend maybe a minute over there, and that is, that is a unique solution. It's not a product, it's a solution that enables our partner to use their cloud and, and to send these uh, uh, machines, the scanners, that, are, that can be uh, uh, connected directly to the cloud. So there are no need for uh, um, an IT engineer or someone to go and install them. It's a plug and play. They scan, it's set up, it's talking to the cloud. Uh, uh, the workflow is set up and the, the access is, is, is remotely and, and the customers are able to put it in their house, to put it in their office, to put it wherever they want. And they can, they can start the, 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 the workflow from there. Uh, that's all the questions I had for you. Uh, thank you, Najee, for speaking to Arabil Rissala. It was nice having you with us today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for you and hopefully we see everyone physically soon.